The final fundamental principle that we consider here is the principle of maximum likelihood estimation. And it's actually a very intuitive principle. Um, think of the data as being a sample from a fully specified distribution. For example, think of the data as being generated by a normal distribution with a given mean and a given variance. Or think of the data as being generated by a Poisson distribution with a given mean parameter. The general principle of maximum likelihood estimation is to solve an optimization problem. To find the value of the parameters that maximizes the joint probability of the sample. Uh, that is called the maximum likelihood. So take the example of counts. And um, we have a distribution that is uh, specified as Poisson with one parameter, the mean of the distribution. And say we have a given sample of counts. And we can compute the joint probability if we assume independence that's the probability of the first observation times the probability of the second observation and so on. So we can compute that. Let's say we have 10 observations, so we have 10 of these probabilities. So for each observation we find out what it is, is its probability to come from a Poisson distribution with this given mean. And the mean is the parameter for which we solve the problem. So say we set the parameter at 2 and we find a joint probability of 0.3. Then we set the parameter at 3 and we find a joint probability of 0.5. So that's better. And we keep doing this until we find a parameter value that gives us the highest possible joint probability. That is then the maximum likelihood estimator. So the my maximum likelihood estimation principle is this idea of how to carry out estimation to find the parameter values that maximize the joint probability. So this is actually a very parametric approach because of course we have to specify the distribution and then once we do that everything is set and it becomes a a fairly straightforward optimization problem. The key concept in this is the likelihood function, which is essentially another word for the joint probability of the sample. And it's important to uh, realize that this likelihood approach thinks of the sample as a function of the data and the parameters, but we maximize the parameter, the unknown to solve for it, so to speak, is the parameter. So we write the likelihood in a classical approach as a conditional, if you wish, conditional upon the data. Uh, so the likelihood is for the parameters theta, conditional upon the data. Now, in a Bayesian approach, the likelihood is written the other way around. It's written as the data conditional on the value of the parameter. So that's a subtle distinction, but otherwise, mathematically, the likelihood, the joint probability itself, is the same. For independent observations, we can simply um, take the product of all the joint probabilities. And to avoid problems with very small values, because all these probabilities have to be multiplied by each other, and also for mathematical convenience, typically the log likelihood function is used instead of the actual likelihood function. So the likelihood function for independent observations would be the product of the individual probabilities or the individual likelihood, the log likelihood, the logarithm of the likelihood function is the sum of the logs of the individual observations, so the individual log likelihoods. So in typical fashion, the log of L of the likelihood function is the sum over I 
to sum over all the observations of the log of the probability function, probability uh, density function for that particular observation as a function of the parameters. And as I mentioned, estimation by means of maximum likelihood is essentially an optimization problem. So we have to find the parameter values that maximize this log likelihood. Um, so it's straightforward application of calculus. How do we find the maximum of a function of a, a small number of parameters by solving the first order conditions? And the first order conditions are um, basically the partial derivatives of the log likelihood with respect to the parameters. And we solve this by setting it to zero. Why zero? Because at the maximum of the function, the partial derivative, which is actually the slope, corresponds to the slope of the tangent to the function at the maximum the tangent is a horizontal, so the slope is zero. So, and this is just straight calculus. Uh, however, the catch is that in many problems, there is no analytical solution to these so-called first order conditions. So if we write down the partial derivatives, we can't really solve them analytically for the parameters. So then we have to carry out uh, numerical optimization. And they can, this can get quite complicated. To illustrate this concept, we've seen this function before. This is the actual log likelihood function for a spatial error model using the Columbus sample data set. And we see the blue function as it changes um, as we alter the value for the parameter lambda on the horizontal axis. And there's, we see the, the slope of the tangent, for example, at the value zero. And as we move on and reach the maximum, the slope of the tangent becomes zero because the tangent becomes horizontal. And the parameter value that solves that optimization problem is the maximum likelihood estimate. So the first order conditions get us the solution, but um, that still doesn't give us any sense of the precision of this estimate. And to get that, we need an asymptotic variance matrix. And this is the variance matrix from the central limit theorem that we just talked about. And we get this, again, from applying some calculus, the so-called second-order conditions. And the second-order conditions um, give us what is called the information matrix. And the information matrix is the negative of the expected value of the second order partial derivatives of the log likelihood. This is a mouthful, but it's you can think of it as the rate of change of the log likelihood. And that gives us a measure of precision. The asymptotic variance is then is the inverse, the inverse of the information matrix. So the information matrix tells us something about precision. The inverse of this tells us something about variance. So in general then, how do we get a maximum likelihood estimator for any given problem? We set up the probabilistic framework, which gives us the density function, which gives us the likelihood and the log likelihood as a function of the data and the parameters, we solve, we maximize that likelihood function. We solve an optimization problem. First order conditions give us the value of the parameters that maximize it. The second order conditions give us a measure of precision or variance. And so then, why is this a good thing? These maximum likelihood estimator <clears throat> is as good as we can do given the assumptions. So as I mentioned earlier, this is highly parametric. We make a lot of assumptions. We make assumptions about the distribution that fully specifies the data. But in return, we get something that is really good, is optimal in many ways. It's consistent. 
it's asymptotically on target. And to prove this, we'll need a law of large numbers. And it's asymptotically efficient. So it has the smallest asymptotic variance among the consistent estimators. It is as good as you can do. In addition, because of all this uh, assumptions, the strong parametric assumptions, the central limit theorists, theorems kick in and we get asymptotic normality. So we get the asymptotic normality from the assumptions. And then a final um, property is a little more subtle. It's called invariance property, which is actually extremely useful when you use the estimates in any kind of calculation. Because what the invariance of the maximum likelihood estimate gives us is that we can essentially, for all practical purposes, replace the true unknown parameter values in any calculation by their maximum likelihood estimates. So this is very useful in policy analysis if we need, for example, to calculate elasticities or cost-benefit ratios or things of that nature. The big uh, caveat, of course, is that this is only as good as the assumptions. So if we make a lot of assumptions, say we assume normality, with, which implies symmetry of the data, and our data are highly skewed, we're going to be in trouble. So that's always good to keep in mind. That's why there are a lot of specification tests in this maximum likelihood environment to make sure that these assumptions actually hold. Now, modern econometrics has done away with a lot of the need of these strong parametric assumptions because we get the normality as a result of central limit theorems that are much more general than the original ones that we used for um, maximum likelihood, classical maximum likelihood estimation. The downside, of course, for spatial data and in general for dependent data, that all the classical results for independent data, where we have the nice products of the probabilities to get the joint probability, or the nice addition of the individual log likelihoods to get the total log likelihood, none of that holds for dependent data and specifically also for independent data. So whereas some of the initial results on maximum likelihood estimation in spatial regression models were derived in the mid-70s, the formal results that actually proved that this was consistent and asymptotically normal were not until the mid 2000s, so 30 years later. Why is that? Because it's very difficult to do. It repri requires specialized laws of large numbers to establish consistency in a case of not independent and not identically distributed random variables, which is fairly complex, and it needs appropriate central limit theorems to establish asymptotic normality in the presence of non-identically and non-independent distributed random variables. So the bottom line is everything works. We get the consistency, we get the asymptotic normality, we get the asymptotic smallest variance, but in order to formally prove it is actually quite complex and quite difficult to do. Uh, luckily, for you, we won't get into that in, in this class.